reckon there's not a day in my life that I don't feel like a fraud. I mean, priests, doctor, lawyers, I've talked to them all. I don't know anyone who lets himself that. Look, it's Halloween. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions of some things that came to mind. You and I were at Warner Brothers when the Exorcist uh, director's cut was being assembled. You called yes. it the Blatty cut because Blatty was the guy pushing. He for was it, the right? real driving force. We got uh, um, Billy Friedkin, who sadly passed away since the last time we spoke. Yeah. And um, I really liked him. He was. Um, Me too. He was quite an eccentric person i mean really really smart i mean if you engage in a conversation with him you would think you were talking to a college professor or something he just knew so much about different things and and he spoke with a great deal of authority right um but he was also a little bit insane like everybody in the movie business is um but i never witnessed it i only heard about it um he, apparently he was one of those people you couldn't give him sugar if you gave him sugar suddenly he turned into a maniac sort of thing so you never if, if you were in a cutting room or mixing stage or something, you never had donuts and, and treats there because it, it just, I don't know. Some would know. say it made him more of a maniac, but anyway, continue. No, but you know what? He was a very gentle, um, sweet person. I, I liked him. I liked him a lot. I liked talking to him. You know, he, he was very, he could engage. Like if the guy was, he would engage with anybody actually. Yeah. And, you know, like I could see like a bike messenger shooting past him on the lot and saying, hey, love to live and die in L.A. And he'd probably say, you know, when we made that movie in San Pedro, Dar Robinson jumped off the bridge in one of his cable <laughs> harnesses. And it was one of the first times we had done that. And I witnessed that, you know, he could kind of just go. Oh, but it was thrilling, yeah. you know, and he made a very good, a very effective movie, as we all know, with The Exorcist. But how was yes. he on the director's and cut? Sorcerer. I, and Sorcerer. And oh, Sorcerer. man. Underappreciated, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, he's um, supposed to have Steve McQueen he, in that. So the, the, um, was it really? Because mm -hmm. he had come off, um, he'd done French Connection with Roy Scheider, and Roy Scheider had, had then done, um, um, uh, Jaws. Jaws, Jaws and, right. um, Marathon Man. So Roy Scheider really came into his own in a big way. And, I don't see Steve McQueen in Sorcerer. I mean, Steve McQueen is a, is a presence, mm -hmm. but there's never going to be really an arc. There's an arc right, in the right. Sand Pebbles, but the rest of his movies, is there really an arc with Steve McQueen? No, um, no. The Exorcist. I don't generally like movies like that. It's not a movie I go to. I That was one of the ones, though, when its original release, where mm -hmm. I was in college at the time, and I went and stood in line in the middle of the winter in downtown philadelphia to go see this movie we stood for i mean we were, we were waiting for the one show to end so we could go in and there were maybe four or five of us we went, went to go movie. see it and um and i remember as we were going you know through the lobby into the actual theater that they had the p promotional posters and the lobby cards in there and, and one of the smaller posters was um just an open window a black and white picture of an open window with the mm -hmm the um the drape coming through it do you remember that like the breeze yeah. was okay so it's like i i didn't know what that was about oh my but oh my god when that movie was over <laughs> i totally got it i totally got what that open window was about and when when that window that shot where that window because i don't want to give anything away to people who haven't seen it i'm sure there's nobody watching this who hasn't seen it yeah spoiler alert know. if you haven't seen a movie that's about to approach its 50th anniversary but, i know but you might know but how it is but you never know that scene happens where that priest mm. goes out that window and down the stairs literally the hair on the back of my head was standing up i mean I, i'd never had that experience before i mean my i had goosebumps in my scalp i mean it was just i'm starting to feel it now i just um it, it was and it's not something i wanted to experience again but then when we were we did the the extended director's cut where they put in some deleted scenes like the scene yeah. where she, like a crab doing the crab walk and stuff um I went to screening room 12 and we were looking at it in there. And I was like, Oh geez, why am I doing this to myself again? You know, midway through the movie, why am I doing this to myself? Well, all again? right. So I remember, <laughs> I remember a moment I was in building 90 and you called me and said, listen, we're going to do, we're going to do like a print check on the exorcist director's cut or something in the screening room up top. Come on up and see it. 
And so I come up and you're in there. And I remember saying like, oh, this is great. I've never seen this footage. And I was asking you what's in it. And you were, I, if I remember, you were kind of concise, kind of uh, on, on what had been put in or something. And you said to, uh, I said, so uh, where are we, where are we sitting? And you're like, oh, I'm not staying for this. Oh, I know. <laughs> or, so, or, something, <laughs> or something. You're like, I'm out of here. You tell me how you like it though. <laughs> so That's how I remember it. I don't know if it actually went down that way. And if you stayed, but it seemed no, like that you were like been, on your that, way out. That's classic me. I would have yeah. not stayed. I would have not stayed for that. No. Your road to redemption is paved with tombstones. No quarter, kill all masters. Go to no quarter, kill all masters.com. Read it R.